We're on lesson 4 of chapter 1, which is adding and subtracting fractions. First, we're going to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Then we're going to evaluate expressions with rational numbers. Then we'll solve a real-world problem. So this is assuming you've had some experience adding and subtracting fractions before, but maybe not with unlike denominators. So for example, we have this fraction, 1 out of 5, or 1 fifth, plus this other fraction, 1 out of 2, or 1 half. And we're trying to add them together. Well, here you see that the denominators are not the same. This is in five pieces. This is only in two pieces. It's kind of tough to add. So how could you do it? Well, you could cut this into the same amount of pieces, or you could get the same number on the bottom. So that's what we did here, actually. Instead of five pieces, we cut these all in half, and now there's ten pieces to this pie. Here, we cut each half into five pieces, and that also gives ten pieces to this pie. So what you have here, then, is two out of ten plus the five out of ten, because this is more, and we add that together, getting seven out of ten. And you can kind of see an example of that. Here's the pie in ten pieces. And here's seven pieces that you have after you add them together. Let's try moving forward and see if we can do some of these together. So here we're being asked to add or subtract. We have 4 over 5 plus 1 over 6. And we're going to try to follow these steps for adding or subtracting fractions. First, we want them to be in improper fraction form. Then we want to find a common denominator. Then we're going to add or subtract. And then we're going to turn it into a mixed number or just simplify it. So since these aren't a mixed number, like 2 and 4 fifths, we don't have to worry about this at all. These are already in a simple form. So we have 4 over 5 plus 1 over 6. So as before, we don't have the same denominator. We can't really add these together. So we have to find a multiple that both of these go into. If you can't think of a number where both of them can go into it evenly, you can just multiply these two numbers together, and that'll be a number. 5 times 6 is 30. So we can turn both of these denominators into 30. Well, how do we do that? Well, 5 goes into 30 6 times, so we're going to multiply 4 fifths times 6 over 6. Why 6 over 6? Because we want to change these numbers, but not the value of the number. We want this bottom number to be 30. So 4 over 6 is 24. 5 times 6 is 30, just like we wanted. Now for this one, 6 goes into 30 5 times, so we can multiply that times 5 over 5. 1 times 5 is 5, 6 times 5 is 30. So we have 24 over 30 plus 5 over 30, which gives us 29 over 30. So that was step 3, adding or subtracting. Now, can we simplify it all? 29 over 30 cannot be simplified there. 29 is a prime number. Now we have 2 and 1 6 minus 2 and 2 ninths. So let's look for our steps here. First, we need to turn into improper fractions. You notice these are mixed numbers, 2 and 1 6. So how do you turn that into improper fraction? You multiply the whole number times the denominator, so 2 times 6, which is 12, and then add whatever's left in the numerator, so plus 1 more is 13. And you keep the same denominator of 6. And we're subtracting here. 2 times 9 is 18, plus the 2 in the numerator gives you 20, and then that stays as 9 down here. Step two is find a common denominator. I know that nine goes into 36, as does six. Remember, if you can't figure that out right away, just multiply them together to find your common denominator. But I'm going to go with 36. Six goes into 36 six times, so we'll do six over six. Nine goes into 36 four times, so we'll do four over four. So 13 times six gives me 78. 6 times 6 is 36, just what I wanted. Now we have 20 times 4, which is 80, and 9 times 4, which is 36, what I wanted too. So 78 over 36 minus 80 over 36. Here we see that this is going to be below 0 because we're taking away more than what we have. And 80 is bigger than 78 by 2, so that'll be negative 2 over 36. We can't turn this into a mixed number because it's not bigger than 1, but we can simplify it. These are both dividable by 2, so that means our answer would be negative 1 over 36 divided by 2, which is 18. 
Now we're going to evaluate expressions with rational numbers, meaning that we're going to plug in numbers for the variable. Here it tells us to do n minus 11 over 16 when n is negative 1 third. So that means that negative 1 third replaces the n. So that gives us negative 1 third minus 11 over 16. They're not mixed numbers, so we can skip step 1, but we can find a common denominator. 3 and 16. I can't think of one right away, so I'm going to multiply them together. 3 times 16 is 48. So that'll be our multiple. 3 goes into 48 16 times. So negative 1 over 3 times 16 over 16 minus 11 over 16. So that'll be times 3 over 3. Negative 1 times 16 is negative 16. 3 times 16 is 48. 11 times 3 is 33. 16 times 3 is 48. And remember, we're subtracting here. So here we have a negative number, and we're subtracting a positive number, which is like adding a negative number. So these are going to be like two negative numbers here. Negative 16, and that tells us we're going to add the values and keep the sign. So negative 16 and negative 33, that's going to give us negative 49 over 48. Now we need to turn this into a mixed number. 49 is bigger than 48. How many times does 48 go into 49? Only once. Then how many is left over? Just one. So we have negative 1 and 1 over 48 for our answer. Now we can solve a real world problem. It says two hikers on the Appalachian Trail are 5 and 3 fourths miles from the trailhead. The hikers cover 2 and 1 eighth miles before taking a break. They then hike another 1 and a half miles before taking a second break. How many more miles do the hikers have to go before reaching the trailhead? There's a number of different ways you can solve this one. But first, let's just wrap our mind around it. They are this many miles away. And they've approached it already by going this far and this far. So what we can do is we can add the total amount that they've hiked already. And then we could subtract that from the total distance they have to go. And we'll find out how much more they have to go. So let's add these together first. We have 2 and 1 eighth and 1 and 1 half. First step is to turn them into improper fractions. So 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1 is 17. And then 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 over 2. Least common multiple would be 8. 8 goes into 8 only once, so we could multiply this times 1 over 1, but that's kind of pointless because it's going to give you the same number. 2 goes into 8 4 times, so let's multiply this times 4 over 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Four, 2 times 4 is 8. So we have 17 over 8 plus 12 over 8. 17 plus 12 is 29. So that's how far they've hiked so far. Remember, they have to hike 5 and 3 fourths. So let's do 5 and 3 fourths minus 29 over 8. And I kept this as improper because I knew I'd have to turn into a proper fraction anyway. Let's turn 5 and 3 fourths into an improper fraction. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23, and that's going to be over 4, minus the 29 over 8. Least common multiple would be 8 again. So 4 goes into 8 twice, so let's multiply this times 2, and then we can just leave this one as is again. 23 times 2 is 46, and that'll be over 8, minus 29 over 8. So 46 minus 29, we can subtract this here, that's 17 over 8. And then step 4, turn into a mixed number. 8 goes into 17 twice, and 8 times 2 is 16. That means there's one left over, 2 and 1 ace. So that's how many more miles they have to go before they reach their trailhead.